Discovering God's Ways To discover God's will for our lives, we should read and study God's Word regularly. Here's Jean. In this particular psalm, David is the author, and four times he talks about God's faithful love. Verse 5, For you, Lord, are kind and ready to forgive, rich in faithful love to all who call on you. In verse 13, For your faithful love for me is great, and you deliver my life from the depths of Sheol. Verse 15, But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in faithful love and truth. And there in this particular verse, he refers to a very, very important concept, which is somewhat the centerpiece of this psalm about God's faithful love. It's the word truth. Because when you go to verse 11, you read this, Teach me your way, Yahweh, and I will live by your truth. Give me an undivided mind to fear your name. And so at the heart of what David is saying here is that God reveals His faithful love in many ways, but one of the ways is through His Word, through His truth. And the fact is that God really wants us to know His will. And that's why He spoke to Moses there on Mount Sinai, spoke from that mountain and said, Thou shalt have no other gods before Me, and proceeded to list all of those commandments. Later, enabled Moses to write the Pentateuch, the first five books of of the Old Testament. Later he spoke through the prophets. All of the minor prophets, the major prophets, uh, men like Ezekiel and Daniel and Isaiah, Jeremiah. Why? Because he wants his people to know his will. But it didn't stop with the Old Testament. You see, God continued the process when Jesus Christ came to eventually speak to us through what we call the New Testament. Now, I want to take you back to the upper room for a moment. And you'll notice that uh, above John 14, 16, I call this verse the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. And this segues, you see, from that psalm about God's faithful love, revealing His truth. They're in the upper room, and Jesus said this to them because they're upset. They're confused. They're uh, disturbed because Jesus said, I'm going to go away. And Jesus said, I don't want you to be troubled. Don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to go, prepare a place for you. I'll come again to receive you unto myself. But in the meantime, he said this. These are very significant words here in uh, John 14, 16. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of Truth. Now, I want you to think about that word Counselor for a moment. The Greek word for this word, English word Counselor, is parakletos. It can be translated in various ways. For example, in the King James Version in English, the Comforter. Uh, it could actually be translated in some respects, the teacher. I'm going to send you another teacher. It could also be translated an encourager. In fact, the word parakletos is frequently translated encourager. Parakaleo, meaning to teach or to encourage. And so Jesus is saying, I'm going to send to you another counselor, another encourager to be with you. So don't let your hearts be troubled. A little later on, in uh, another passage of Scripture, right here in this upper room discourse with these men, he said, I've spoken these things to you while I remain with you. And what he's really implying there, yes, I am going to go away. But here's the good news. But the Counselor, the Parakletos, the Holy Spirit, the Father will send him in my name, will teach you all things, and remind you of everything I have told you. In another place, Jesus said to these men, 
I cannot tell you more. There's much more I could teach you, but you can't bear it now. But he also said, I'm going to send the Spirit to remind you of everything I've told you. Now, the fact of the matter is that much of what Jesus taught during those three years went in one ear and out the other. And what they heard many times and did hear, they distorted. They didn't understand what Jesus was saying. But He is saying that when the Holy Spirit comes, He's going to remind you of everything. And while Jesus is saying that, Matthew is, is sitting there reclined, listening to Jesus teach. He's one that is nervous as well as the others. And he has no idea that one of the days after the Holy Spirit came, after Jesus went back to heaven, the Holy Spirit came, that he's going to pick up his pen and he is going to re actually record the Beatitudes. He's going to record the Sermon on the Mount that's recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. He's going to record the story of Jesus. See, Jesus is referring to this event that's going to happen. They have no idea what's going to happen. And later, right in the same situation, he, he makes this statement. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He's simply saying that I am the way, I am the truth, but there's a lot more that I'm going to tell you. The Father's going to speak to you through the Holy Spirit. For He will not speak on His own, but He will speak whatever He hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. Sitting there, listening, is John the Apostle. He has no clue what's going to happen. He has no idea that He's going to pick up His pen and He's going to someday record in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And He recorded the whole Gospel of John and the miracles that are recorded there so that we might believe who Jesus Christ really is, the Son of God. He has no idea he's going to pick up his pen and write three little letters we call the John's Epistles. But furthermore, he has no clue whatsoever that he's going to go in exile in his 90s there on the Isle of Patmos, and Jesus himself is going to appear to him and is going to say, take up your pen and write what is and what is to come. What is to come goes right back to this promise. What is the promise? Notice, he will also declare to you what is to come. That's the book of Revelation. Now, Jesus went to the cross. He died. He rose again. And He went to heaven. And on the day of Pentecost, what happened? The beginning of the promise it was fulfilled. The Holy Spirit came. And Peter got up to speak. And 3,000 responded as he expounded on what was happening. And then we read this in Acts 2.42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. These 3,000 believers, as John and Peter were speaking by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Later, they picked up their pens and they wrote what we have in the New Testament. The apostles' teaching. In essence, the New Testament is the Apostles' teaching. God, you see, wants us to know His will. And the final book that was written, of course, is the book of Revelation. So we have at our disposal today not just the Old Testament that David was thinking about, but we have the New Testament given to us by the Spirit of truth through the Apostles who were able, by inspiration of God, to give us the rest of the story, both the Old and now the New Testament. So here is a reflection and response question. How can God's truth, as revealed in Scripture, help us to have an undivided mind? Now you remember, the prayer was on the part of David that we might know God's truth, so we'll have an undivided mind. 
a mind that is single, focused on God's will. And one of the ways, of course, two things that I think are very important, is that the Word of God is a double-edged sword. And we read about this in the book of Hebrews. For the Word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double-edged sword. Using that, of course, here as a metaphor. And you know what a double-edged sword does. But he applies this to the Word of God. It penetrates as far as the separation of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It is able to judge the ideas and thoughts of the heart. God wants us to know His will, and He wants, to know, wants us to walk in His will. He wants us to know, as David did, and thank God for His faithful love. But we know about that faithful love through the coming of Jesus, but particularly through the record that we have here in the New Testament. The Word of God that penetrates. If we allow the Word of God to penetrate our souls, the Spirit of God who authored the Word of God is able to penetrate into our hearts. If we open our hearts to hear what He has to say. Now there's a second thing that I think is very important here. And I call this encouraging one another. This is the book of Hebrews, verses 24 and 25, in chapter 10. And let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works, not staying away from our worship meetings as some habitually do, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now what I want you to notice here is something that is very fascinating and I think profound. Simple but profound. Remember Jesus called the Holy Spirit the parakletos, the Spirit of Truth, the Encourager. Now what do you suppose is the basic word that's translated encouraging each other? It comes from that very word, parakleto, from the word to encourage, to be an encourager, parakletos. Now here is the, the profound thought. To put this in the plural, Jesus sent the parakletos so that we could be the parakletoi. Parakletoi is the plural of parakletos. In other words, we can encourage one another. We can be encouragers just as the Holy Spirit encouraged the apostles and gave them the Word of God, we have the Word of God to be able to encourage one another, to be encouragers like the Holy Spirit enabled the apostles, encouraged them as well. I don't know about you, but that really excites me. So one of the ways in which we can discover the will of God and live in the will of God is to be encouragers of one another. So let's remember this principle to live by. To discover God's will for our lives, we should read and study God's Word regularly, but we might add to that, we are to be encouragers as we meet together to teach, admonish one another, and to build each other up, not only with the Word of God, but in the way we live out the Word of God.